Nico, by all accounts, is the best rifler of all time in CSGO, and somehow he's only getting better. Not only that, but looking at the stats, he's somehow even better against top 5 and top 10 opponents than those that are lower ranked. So let's take a look and look at what you can learn from Nico. Before we go any further, I want to thank the sponsor for this video, Leadify. Leadify is an AI coach that allows you to improve faster by analyzing your face it or matchmaking games and giving you insight into your weaknesses as well as personalized training. Leadify also has a new rating system. Rather than trying to analyze your performance with an outdated system based primarily on kill to death ratio, you can use Leadify's rating system that takes into account the impact your kills have on your team's ability to win rounds, something you want to be doing in-game as well. Oddly enough, this somehow makes simple even better. Anyways, Leadify is free to use, so head to the link in the description and give it a try. 30 seconds. Nico looking to activate, takes the all three! He wants to go again! And so does Electronic, but that's surely it! There's the grenade, and he runs through Nico! What a next level play! The HE will almost kill him, but not quite, and he takes the round. And Ace to win the second one on the board for G2. What a goal! Now, of course, Nico is no Yukindar. Maybe we'll make a video on Yukindar in the future. But one of the things Nico does well is his patience. Patience? You mean baiting? Well, it can occasionally devolve into baiting, but a lot of it is just understanding pressure. A great example of that would be this round against NIP. Nico is stuck market with two of his teammates flanking and Nexa on a super late rotate. The clock is ticking down and Nico's already been spotted, but instead of trying to force an engagement out of door, he waits out the smoke and ends up getting himself a 2k. Personally, watching this, I actually thought they definitely didn't have nearly enough time, but was completely wrong. The delay is likely actually what won them that round because his opponents started getting antsy when the pressure from the flank initiated. Well, this is by definition baiting, as he let his teammates draw pressure before activating himself. He also didn't shy away from contact earlier in the round when he still had an advantage by way of surprise. Pressure doesn't always have to be utilized in a baity manner at all though, and we can see that in this round against Heroic. Nico is the one that makes initial contact getting a kill under Cadian, then he swaps to the op and gets another kill. Instead of instantly rotating around a market doorway like most players would and get themselves killed, he knows that there's pressure from that angle indefinitely and stays close to market window, waiting for his opponent to make a mistake, which he does. To put it simply, Nico understands and utilizes pressure that his opponents may feel either by a player actually being in a location or simply the potential for a player to be in a specific location to catch his opponents making mistakes. Now, of course, one mistake that Nico himself makes is that he still uses the SG in 2022. Why? And they're just waiting. As soon as he tries to tap it, they're going to swing him together. So does he try and force the fights before that turn? Smoke down. Do they go through? Yes, they do. And Nico, oh, the tap. No way. He's done it. That is filth for Nico. But really, his crosshair placement is probably his next most important asset. Nico plays on a very low sensitivity, and that means his crosshair placement needs to be pretty on point, and it is. You can see this here, which is an almost comically exaggerated example of crosshair placement, failed crosshair placement, but you can see that's also always in his mind, and that includes both pre-aiming angles as he peaks, but also holding angles as well. Many players, even pros, will put their crosshair directly on a corner and flick over to those peeking into them when they peek over that angle. Nico instead has his crosshair oftentimes with a bit of cushion from the corner, so that when his opponents do peek him, he doesn't have to move his crosshair at all. Crosshair placement and movement are also probably the most important factors that lead to consistent deagle aim, and Nico is certainly one of the best. In fact, you can truly see the strength of his crosshair placement in some of his insane deagle rounds. 50 seconds, that's a good Molotov to force him a little bit further back. There's one of them. Oh, the follow-up as well. He's looking for the triple 45 seconds. They're all over him. Grenades left and right, but he lands a third headshot. Back for more. He finally goes down. Along with crosshair placement, Nico also has a ton of confidence. I mean, why wouldn't he? 
But seriously, confidence is the most underrated asset in any top player. You simply cannot be a great player unless you have confidence. And Nico exemplifies how being supremely confident can allow you to pre-fire angles that don't even exist. Dude, this guy's fucking pre-fired angles that don't exist! It can let you get into positions your opponents don't expect. You can see this throughout the PGL Major, but no games are more obvious than his game against NIP on Inferno. Nico is consistently re-aggressing into angles after being cleared out, and while obviously this requires him to win fights if his opponents are still there, when they aren't, it allows him to get some insane flank timings and completely disrupt the attacking side. This is how you carry as a rifler on CT. You can see this on round 15 as he nearly loses a gunfight, gets pushed back, and then re-aggresses quickly, which allows him to hit a flank on A site at a ridiculous timing. Now on top of that, Nico also tries to break timings against his opponents when he thinks he can open up a round, especially to do something like take a bomb site off of a kill, or simply catch a solo player unprepared. You may have seen that in the major final where Simple was visibly surprised by Nico crossing before Smokes bloomed outer on Nuke. Smokes drop, Simple, the man who ruined it in the last on the other side of things, pushing on up, and Whoa. there it is, Nico denies him this time round. The Smoke, he's waited for exactly that. Stunned, Simple, stunned. But another very interesting play is this one against NIP on Mirage, where he literally tries to run through a Molotov to catch a player falling back without his gun out. Perhaps the most interesting part of that play, though, is that he doesn't commit. This is a scenario where a lot of players would feel they have to continue forward, but Nico is one of the most calm and collected players I've seen under pressure, and he knows he can casually back away without really taking much of a loss at all. Of course, though, that can't always be true. Mistakes do happen. And simple sitting no! No! Disaster! Shot! An absolute disaster! One of Nico's traits alongside understanding pressure is his ability to catch his opponents with split focus at the right moment. While pushing through a smoke is often looked at as dangerous, and if you were in 2014, dumb. That's so lame. In many scenarios, when you know your opponents are distracted, it can actually be a way to get some free kills and support a teammate. You can see that in this round against NIP on Inferno, where twice he catches his opponents off guard with their backs to a smoke that he goes through. This is not by accident, especially if you look at the instance on B, he doesn't run straight through the smoke. He allows them to get distracted by his teammate at Newbox first, instead of simply rhinocerousing through instantly when the smoke pops. He allowed his opponents to think he wasn't going to push through, and then caught them off guard with the delay. You can see in this round against Heroic on Mirage, he uses similar pressure, except this time from his teammates moving up connector to catch a player looking the wrong direction just after throwing a smoke at ramp. Smokes aren't brick walls, especially when they're dissipating and Nico sits in them every time because there's a slight advantage and Valve, please fix this. It's, I hate it so much. Please fix it. Now, allowing your opponents to think an angle is clear before punishing them is a key to making your kills easy. Obviously, Nico is very capable of winning straight up gunfights and does so often. Very often. Very, very often. Realistically, you can find better consistency when you shoot your opponents in the back. Interestingly, if we actually take a look at the full Deagle Whiff round from Nico, even getting into that situation was very effective in itself. From top lobby, he throws utility to allow his team to take sight with pistols, and when things go wrong, he knows the next step is to adjust focus to take ramp control. Somehow his team actually turns it around, and he turns it into a flank, but equally he opened up another opportunity for his team. In some scenarios, this lurk could have actually allowed his teammates to go ramp to lower, or simply drop vents to lower with support. In this scenario, he didn't though. Now for one second, I'd like to actually return to Nico's use of the SG. Honestly, I'd like to hear some thoughts on this because I'm a bit undecided. Nico likes to use the SG in situations where his team doesn't have an AWP, and he uses it essentially as an AWP. It allows him to lock down angles, at least against riflers, that it would be pretty tough to do with an AK, and it generally does seem to work. In the current meta, it also seems to match up quite well against the M4A1S, as even though the SG shoots comically slow, it still kills in three shots to the body, and is quite literally more accurate than the AW. I suppose if you're as good as Nico is in terms of aim, it could make sense, but I've also been experimenting with it myself to much less success.
I don't know if you can copy everything Nico does. One of Nico's traits that's very obvious is that he often lets his opponents make mistakes into him instead of trying to go after them. A lot of the time these mistakes are based on pressure his team is putting on or plays he knows his team is going to make. Realistically, in your own experience, you probably can't rely on your teammates in quite the same way or your teammates will do the standard complain if you don't get aggressive quickly enough and they end up running out and dying on their own. Green, Green, what, what's your problem, Green? What is your problem? Missile alone ram. Missile alone ram. One aspect you can definitely steal at all times though is his spacing. This one feels like a small thing, but is actually definitely a small thing, but a ridiculous amount of people get it wrong. Look, when it comes to spacing, you want to be close enough that if the player ahead of you dies in your push, your opponent can't get away, but far enough that you don't actually just get sprayed down and multi-frag. Try to think of yourself as being five feet away. You also realistically on an execute almost always want your second player directly tracking the path of your first player to get those trades, but that's a bit more complicated in general. Nico spacing, as with most top level pros, is very much on point and is something you should be picking up for yourself. The final thing I think you should take serious note of is knowing when to make a play. You can see this in specific rounds, like this one against NIP where he jumps up to get a kill because his team is 4v5, or if we go back to the PGL Stockholm final, he also does this in games when he knows his team isn't getting things done. Now while the captain often goes down with the ship, that doesn't mean he doesn't have to go down without a fight. These timings are crazy. Oh, but Nico. Oh, wow. For the middle. This is so dangerous. That he's, Oh, he's hitting the shot. Oh, what an opening. Three kills for Nico. That was world class. If you look at Nuke against Na'Vi, Nico actually started to get countered near the end of the game because Na'Vi realized that his team could literally not win a single round without him doing an individual play to carry. Obviously, you don't want to get to that point. But the reality was that if he simply stuck around in his role and went down with the ship, his team would have gotten banged out. This is a switch you can flip as well in your own games, where sometimes you have to turn it up to 11 to actually carry, but other times you can just chill and play your role. Being able to understand the difference between a game where you need to go hard and make plays round after round, and a situation where you can simply let yourself be carried is an aspect that I think most high level pugging players know. Now I know I've talked a lot about what Nico does right and what you should learn, but is there anything he does wrong? Yeah. He should probably stay away from IGLing. Thanks for watching. Here's the peek out of apartments. Hunter spotted, dancing around. Nico oh. not knowing about yet. And the kills come in for Nico and Hunter. That's why they've got these guys in G.